Hello comrade, today we will talk about prices and uh, finish the last industry which you can see appearing there in the background in our little winter wonderland, we all love the winter and yeah, let's finish the season up gracefully so see you Good. So let's do some housekeeping before we go to the main topic of this episode. Um, let's organize here the production and everything. So for this thing I need an additional distribution office. Oh. <laughs> I need a big additional distribution office. This is this one. Yeah. First I go with one, maybe I need a second, we will see. One of the biggest benefits of this distribution office is that you can uh, balance what is pulled out, which you couldn't do with the usual setup. Oh my god. Okay. Can we make it like so and so? Yes, we can do, but firstly build. Okay. Oh. Um, let's see. They're up to the task. Auto search 3000 meters, okay. Also, auto search roads. Yeah. Okay. You are at the moment doing nothing. Come with me, not auto searching either. You should also auto search. Yes. You are the fuel guy. Okay. You are the depot. I want a bus line like I had on the other um, border, if you remember. It will be SKD bus. So. Hmm. It's interesting. If I type in here, it will jump out of the category here, yeah, but <laughs> interesting GUI we are used to. So the small bus is fast, which we don't care so much about. The big bus is a little bit slower, but I want the small bus. Have two. Drive, let them drive to the border here and back to get the regular working force here. Should be nice. Okay, you please make me this one. Thank you. So, fire station. Still got no fuel. Got the distribution office. You? You got the fuel office, I think. Yes. Oh, got no power. Got no power. Got power. Oh. Yeah. Okay. It's the small things and always get you in the game. Ah! My people office went away. Okay. You do this. And do that. High priority before something blows up here. We know the game. Okay. Here they are on it. They should also be on auto search. Okay. Let's check them two out at the border here. Woof. Oh. Don't know if it helps to let them auto search for longest. Yeah. You look awfully not engaged. You're on auto search. Okay. Looks like you are on it. Yeah, distribution office. Yeah. Good. So, what's up with the city? We have a population of uh, 2,700 people and not so much workers, but it's okay. We have a big unemployment. We have good, um, good health and Excellent happiness. It's good. So, 
Okay. It's a so-so situation with our useless dormitory. <laughs> half of the people have moved out here. The other half tries hard to be educated. Yeah. Um, I built the dormitory because I don't want to spend money on additional highly educated people and I need them badly. So we jumped up about, uh, we doubled the amount of educated people. You see how it goes up quite straightforward. Good thing with the dormitory I expanded last time. Um, if you really need educated people, you get them. But usually the um, the university works by itself. So simply people go to school until they're 15. And if they have an education level of 1.0, they go to the university until they are 21. And all is taken care by itself. Yeah. You usually must go the other way around and limit the amount of people you want to have in the university. Okay. This school is the school of the highly educated people, uh, school house. And uh, I have set these ones here and the game does a better job than me here. So if you try, you can balance it out and it will come out in some ways, but the game does an okay job. And if you don't have the restrictions, they will find their jobs. It's okay. I want to activate my radio station on full steam. Okay. Everyone can go there because I have still unemployment and it's okay. They can do their thing. The radio station, um, like I said, is the end, uh, marking the end game <laughs> in 1963. We are entering 64. Um, we have 609 people which we can educate via radio, which are usually the more highly skilled people. And uh, that's 40% of the population and only we have only 50 listeners so it's 60 it's minuscule but we will educate them hard <laughs> so 1% propaganda is okay for our current level because our people are not so loyal the outcome is not so good in every everywhere we have uh, these numbers here the outcome is also influenced by the loyalty of your people the rating depends on the productivity and the loyalty of your people and how many you have. And if you have a modded radio station, you can maybe reach only 50% or something, or five, uh, 60. I can reach higher ratings if my people spiral up. So with the radio, you got into an upward spiral. Um, with the passive loyalty, you can keep it stable at, let's see, we have at the moment 39%. So it's between 35 and 40 percent um i tend to have between 15 to 20 percent of passive loyalty in every building in the city and the workplace is around 15 percent so comrade lenin here does his job with four percent and every one here has five percent yeah so the uh, the stars are great because they have a very big reach most of the city is reached by them. And I also have some here at the working place. So everyone knows where the uh, red star should be. <laughs> Let's hammer them out in the head. Um, yeah. Here are still the line is a little bit oversaturated. So they take the workers home. But it's not a real tragedy because I still have unemployment so I can afford. Even though I only load 30% of the buses here in. So they go for with 30 people 50% uh, here see yeah it's enough to keep them all running mm, let's make this one higher winter is here yeah, so everyone is staffed and uh, productive which we want uh, bauxite is running on full steam I will come to the uh, prices in the second part yeah Okay. With Boxside, I had a quite interesting development. <laughs> Strap yourself in. <laughs> it will be number crunchy. This is the familiar site if you have watched the first season. It is the conclusion of the first season and how to be fast in realistic mode. I have made a whole episode about this one. I just wanted to show it again because it's important for me. 
um, I measure my performance on the speed I did this and um, I was ready with this episode after three and a half years, so having crime and justice in the radio station, um, yeah, it's only my kind of gameplay and my rules, um, so no mods, uh, first time no loans, second time no money at the start and um, be fast. Others uh, do their gameplay as they want, or you do your gameplay as you want to be perfectly free. It's a free, free and sandbox game. Just um, take a look and enjoy other people, other ideas. Uh, these are my ideas, uh, and I hope you enjoyed them around the second season. The third season will be something different, so I have no fear. <laughs> It's in the it's in the woodworks, uh, but I will come to it. Uh, but keep your eyes peeled. <laughs> okay, um, the this represents the uh, factors which you have to keep in mind if you are starting a realistic mode and its economy, workers and uh, construction. If if you have if you don't manage one sector correctly, it will weigh down all the other sectors and it will cost you time. If you don't go uh, bankrupt, uh, time is the other factor where you can see how good or bad your gameplay is in the measurements by my scale. <laughs> so be fast. Yeah. Um, other people did this also with me and we are in a nice collective in the channel of Oliki. I will link to my first episode to the channel and uh, Oliki did a second or third time uh, he did the realistic start and be fast and it's nice uh, he he uses mods <laughs> but it's okay um, Kaya Maya also absolutely destroyed the game she uh, made it happen in one year and has a, had a vehicle production line and just killed it so the vehicle production line make a profit of 120k a month which is enormous I didn't expect this one to see but uh, congrats to you go go <laughs> yeah um i like to see other people and i also like totally different playthroughs like for example uh, steven silver brad uh, makes uh, one he has an early start which i quite enjoy um but it's, uh, also <laughs> exec chaos uh, does something and uh, he also enjoys it so yeah Everyone finds his audience and also finds people who like to watch them play and watch them express their ideas to the game. And I think that's the most important thing. So I won't bother you with this one. You can watch my episode about uh, how to be fast. <laughs> now let's come to the meat of this one. So the community report 56 and 57, I will also link them. <laughs> F. Uh, have told us how it's done with the inflation and it is uh, crazy <laughs> so bam here you are this is the this is closely related to the prices export price development and inflation not so inflation is the goal of the game uh, which should be um 10 percent which isn't i will show you the data in a moment um and here we are with a fairly complicated and convoluted table what exporting and importing does to our prices and first i want to um, make this table a little bit more uh, watch viewer friendly so uh, for example this whole column we don't need um, because this column represents the exports in um, 75 days and nobody needs that uh, we want the exports um, the monthly exports which you can somehow uh, get into your head get your head around this one um, next one is um, over here we also don't need and the rest of the kafafel we also don't need let me just remove you from the equation um, because uh, i only will focus this time on exports so um and we focus on the exports i make in the game which is bauxite and bauxite ore here called uh, it's raw bauxite in the game yep so we don't need to look at aluminium and also i made uh, exports with oil so where's my oil iron ah here you are 
So remove you. Okay. And remove the rest of the fray. Yeah, yeah. I'll just focus on the things we can see and explain by the numbers I have. So, okay. Good. So this is what left off the table, which is <laughs> a little bit less frightening. Uh, there's something bitumen we also don't want. Go away, bitumen. Thank you. Okay. Good. Good, good. Mm. So, I need to take some notes, so let me just make some lines for my notes. Have this one. Oh, where are you? Where are you? Good. Okie dokie. So, mm, this is the threshold number, but it's not the real threshold number, it's the threshold number before workers. <laughs> So, yeah, sounds uh, crazy and it is kind of. So, what does it mean? Threshold numbers before workers means the amount of workers in your country have uh, influence of the threshold. The, let's say the amount of what are you, what are you allowed to export? It's uh, the threshold somehow. So, let's pull out the calculation which is provided by 3D Vision for the threshold. It looks like this, yeah. Super simple. Mm. I would suggest to radically simplify this one. And um, I would simplify this one by a simple, you know, do math in your head and uh, do it to have a feeling for the game and not to have the exact numbers. Because it's far important for me to have a feeling what, what my export do and don't do. So the, my suggestion is calculate the uh, radical exports, uh, the actual threshold, it's 50% of the threshold, over and out. <laughs> so uh, it's like the first part here without the second part. The second part is the threshold gets calculated by the amount of workers, but uh, the prices are really important in the early game and in the uh, mid game. Not so much in the late game where you are so should be self-sufficient on many sectors anyway. So you don't care so much about the prices and the export industry or imports. Um, but the game and the developer leads to self-sufficiency. That's, uh, that's the goal of the game. If you want to factor in your workers in, the, in my formula, use this one. So the percentage is 50% plus 10% for every 5,000 workers. Then you have the actual, we have the same formula as here, but you can do it in your head. So if you have uh, 10,000 workers, you have 70% of the threshold, which is your goal and which the game will punish you for it if you overstep it. <laughs> yeah, so um, to use this formula, I would say uh, the first number is not relevant for you. It's only if you export by truck, it's this one times 0 0.5 and here we are. This is the number which is relevant for you if you export by truck or by train for our three goods. And if you export by ship, and this is the big takeaway, so exporting by ship or by plane, you can take this number times uh, three. Okay, so this is the monthly export uh, it's like a level you know so uh, like the amount of punishment which you receive by the game <laughs> you can see uh, the more you export the more you get punished and um, the more you reach this level you get punished by 100 <laughs> percent if you overstep it it can punish you 200 percent what does the, the punishment mean so just to be clear uh, if i have if I export by train, I can export 760, 760 tons of raw bauxite. If I do the same thing with the ship, I can export 2,200 tons per month. And the game has the same influence on prices. Um, what does the punishment mean? So we can pull out a simplified formula, thank you developers, um, for the amount of punishment you receive. Um, you receive punishment for import and export. So if you import stuff, 
uh, this is the formula for export. If you export stuff, your prices go down. So, for example, I want to sell my bauxite. My prices for bauxite go down. I'm less and less, uh, uh, you know, profitable. And if I import something, my prices go up. This is why here's a minus and here's a plus. But it goes up by the same mechanic and the same amount. The only thing which changes are the thresholds. So this is why I think the table is is use, useful, but only to have some feeling how much you export um, will influence the gameplay. And I took a look at this number before I started the second season to see, okay, train is absolutely not worth, not worth it for me. I get punished too hard, so I take the ship road. Also, train has some other uh, things which are bad. And you need time and workers and steel to construct the railway, which you don't have at the start, but it's another topic. Okay, so we are still in our raw bauxite business. Let's uh, go with our raw bauxite business and run. <laughs> so, uh, price import factor. Oof. It's um, exported. So let's say I export 760 tons of raw bauxite and I have the my actual threshold of 760 tons because I have no workers. So if I take this one by 0.05, this, this means my price will change, it will lower by 5%. So I have 1 times 0 0.05, which amounts to 1, uh, which amounts to 0 0.05, which is like 5%. And then it gets uh, subtracted by 1. So you have 95% of your price, which you can get. So this would be 95% um, of your normal price. If I export via train, if I export the same via ship, I only have here the exported will be exported will be uh, 760, but my actual threshold will change. Also, it will change if I have more people. Look at every 5,000 people, I get 10% more of actual threshold. So, if I uh, export via ships. I have this actual threshold of 2,300 tons, which means I will have 760 divided by 2,300, which came out uh, like one third, more or less. And I have one third of this factor into my price development. So I would have a price change of, let's say, 79%. I will sell. So I will make way more money and my prices will not collapse so hard. But they also, I get punished every time I export. So there's no difference if you export. The difference is how hard you get punished by the game. Same goes for import. If you import a little, uh, you get uh, punished a little. If you import uh, much, you get punished much because, for example, your uh, prices of your food stuff or something will go up or electronics uh, which can spiral out really out of control yeah so what do we take away from this one mm. <laughs> if you want to see this on the screen please freeze frame it i will come to the conclusion of the whole the theoretical part now <laughs> yeah so Our takeaways are, first, the game has a base inflation of 10%, which makes everything 10% more costly, uh, inflation goal, so to speak. It does not inflate by 10%, but we can look into my numbers and um, yeah, you can draw your own conclusions or follow mine. Um, these are only observations. I should have tested everything, but uh, a test takes five years so uh, yeah <laughs> somebody has to have a, a life you know so yeah inflation should be 10 percent which means if you buy uh, one ton of food for 100 uh, ruble next year it will cost 110 ruble or one ton of steel 400 ruble next year it will cost 450 and the year, year after it will cost uh, 400 uh, nearly 500 ton uh, ruble per ton if you do nothing so because uh, like said before everything you do will also inf uh, have something to do with your prices next takeaway is this one like i said if you import prices will go up if you export prices will go down 
So far so good. Um, but the game does some things. <laughs> um, next takeaway is more export, more bad. So because of these prices here in the top, um, it uh, if you if you specialize on one product and export the heck out of it, you will not get happy. Pardon me. Game does not like it. The game developer think uh, it's good for you to diversify and to be self-sufficient. So this is the design we have to deal with it. Um, so what you can do is diversify, have one industry to make you the initial starting money and uh, go to other industries and uh, have always enough money, have a money engine industry, but also diversify, uh, for example, not export the heck out of uh, electricity or oil. We will look into the prices of my game in a minute. So, next takeaway is... Mm, how bad is it? And this one, uh, that's why I made this uh, episode for. This is how you can get a feel of how bad is your export activity on the market. And the thresholds give you a feel. You don't need to calculate the uh, percentages and so on. You will Because the game does some things... Uh, we will see it in, uh, later, uh, where you simply cannot predict what the game does. It's um, one, the market events, and the second one is um, the goods are uh, connected to each other in an interesting way. Yeah. So, um, yeah, take this table, make it 50% and run. <laughs> Would be my my suggestion, um, just to see how you know how much you export per month and how big of influence it could have. And next takeaway is make it less bad. Make use ships. <laughs> it is uh, three times less the uh, actual threshold, so you can export three times more. The problem with ships are they are really expensive at the start, so uh, really uh, start. Clothes is the easiest thing, or uh, like exporting vehicles. The export of vehicles has no influence on the prices. Um, that's a big takeaway. So, yeah, if your steel price rises, your vehicle price rises. But if you export the heck out of vehicles, it will not uh, crash your market. So, vehicle export is very nice. Clo you can build a clothes factory, not two clothes factories, because this one will crash your market. Make enough money and diversify into other industries. There are enough industries where you can start quite simply and uh, go forwards or backwards in the production line. For example, going from clothes to fabric, uh, producing your own chemicals and your own crops, mm, export the chemicals and the uh, cloth, and uh, you are good to go. And after that, you can some do something else. Yep. So this is the theoretical part. Let's get to the practical part. For the practical part, I pulled out the data from the game. Um, there's a stats file and I have written a Python script which created a database which wrote them into the database and where I pulled out the data from the database and uh, constructed this little fellow here with the help of Kcheap. I thank you my friend, uh, without Kcheap I wouldn't have done it in this way. Um, he helped me visualize the data and put them in into Google Docs and um, get some nice graphs out of it super helpful and it's always fun to work together on a problem and not to do it alone yeah so here is the uh yeah the graphs of the consumer goods and i uh, pulled out the consumer goods because they are um quite straightforward so this one represents a normal kind of inflation in the game um, i only have minimal exports for my a few thousand people two thousand people at the end so the prices are not disturbed in big way like other prices which we come to and um, in any way the uh, prices are underperforming so in compared to the inflation goal of the game. So let's say here we have a price of 290 at the start for uh, for meat and um, the prices are very close together. I'm sorry, um, it's um, meat and alcohol. The prices are nearly identical. But also you can see that the curves are identical, which is also nice. So uh, they are 
Meat and alcohol is uh, crop related and I think because the crop price was stable, these prices are also stable. We can do related prices in the next one. So 200, uh, let's say 290 at the start of the game and four years later it is um, around 370. And if I would have 10% inflation, 290, 10% would be um, around 320. In the next year, 10% of uh, 320 would be 350. The next year, 10% of 350 would be 385. Next year, 10% would be around 420. And we have here uh, 370. So it missed the inflation goal. It is inflation around 7% let's say for these goods so this is the real inflation the game pro produced my game plan produced uh, which is related to other factors and um, we can see other factors if we tap into the steel table so steel was the the thing is i imported a lot of steel and it should be if i believe the pricing it should be over the inflation curve so the curve which is very straight here this one is the inflation curve we calculated and put that in by 10 percent so you can see how the steel performs compared to the inflation um, and on the lower side we see the ores so what i did with steel is i imported a lot of steel and uh, i exported a lot of ores and i wanted to see if there's a connection between the bauxite and the iron and coal ore if they are somehow linked and mm, i see a weak connection but not every time so for example here we have a spike in the lower left you see here we have the spike in the ores and also we have a spike in steel so these ones seem to be connected in a way because you need coal and iron to produce steel and if they are ramping up your steel price goes up same way if you crush your uh, your coal price or your iron price by exporting massive amounts of these stuff you should crush also your steel price which is interesting and if you export at the same time a lot of steel with your steel mill uh, you should double crush it <laughs> but if you import a lot of coal and iron it will uh, it will leverage your coal and iron price and if you export the whole steel stuff it will crush it at the same time and they are related so your fine percent calculation goes out of the window <laughs> it's uh, yeah so i said um with the table before just keep in mind what what you uh, you're, what you're doing and how big the influence could be and uh, observe your game what it does because it's uh, not very predictable um you can understand it in a in a very broad way but uh, in detail the game does what it wants so and the developer does not tell us everything i think the same goes for if you have here some dips you see also reflected the dips in the ores but um, yeah, they are related to each other. And we see other graphs where the causation is very high. So let's go to the oil. This one, um, the big colored area, this one is my oil exports. It's on the right side, the oil exports uh, by quantity. And on the left side are the prices. These are different oil-based products. So we have at the bottom uh, the oil and uh, we have fuel and bitumen and we have plastics because uh, plastics a good amount of plastics is uh, also oil ingredient to produce it and um, then we can see what happens if i exported oil a lot so uh, here are my monthly exports which came to around 900 tons a month and you see the oil prices and the oil price stagnates so the, i hope i hit it let's see the oil price is at the start 45 and at the end is 38 so it's like um 10 percent lower even more than 10 percent lower which is huge compared to other prices which are going up so i have the situation if i only export oil and if i would export more oil it would be more bad uh, I have the situation that my consumer goods go up, but my income from the oil goes down. 
So you have two lines which are going uh, on the opposite direction, which is very bad for your economy because the, you make less money and it's less worth. You can buy less steel, for example, for it. So uh, if you here, you in the fourth year, I can buy kind of what is the steel price in the fourth year? It's uh, 570 and it, at the start it was around 380, 400, yeah, 417. Uh, 390 yeah so uh, let's say it's 200 uh, 200 ruble more per ton of steel and if I make less for my oil price or the same for my oil price I have to pay 200 more per ton but I uh, don't make more money so my money is less worth and I because the inflation does not hit my uh, products I export I'm uh, fracked <laughs> simple um, the relationship between the oil and the fuel and bitumen you see here. So fuel and bitumen is closely related and also oil is closely related. So fuel and bitumen also don't go up with the inflation. They stay the same or even uh, go down here. But I didn't export any fuel or bitumen. I just exported raw oil. But because I crushed the price of raw oil, uh, fuel and bitumen also went down or flatlined. And flatlined is also bad if you have 10% inflation. And what is interesting is also if you compare the curve of the plastics and the curve of um, fuel and oil, you see they are related because they all based on uh, fuel and bitumen are related because they are all based on oil. And this is where the game can be very confusing because prices are linked together and you don't see a clear relationship and you don't know how the developer uh, calculates the prices against each other. I think the prices are calculated like the factory needs them as raw goods. But it's uh, it's hard to digest and um, we only see here my observations and my uh, bigger trends. The last observation I wanted to share is uh, with bauxite. It's a little bit more interesting. So. Um, let's go back on my bauxite table, which is here. Yeah. So you see, I have uh, limits. I exported by ship, and I have limits of 2,200 tons of bauxite uh, of raw bauxite and 3,300 for uh, refined bauxite, which is great because refined bauxite. Firstly, you reduce the volume of refined bauxite. You need uh, two tons of uh, raw bauxite, I think. I don't remember actually, but you you uh, reduce the volume of raw bauxite, and uh, you get refined. I think it was like thirty percent reduction or something. So, but you reduce the tonnage of bauxite you want to export, and also you increase the threshold. So. Bauxite is far better to export than raw bauxite. Um, you will crash your prices, prices quite hard with raw bauxite. Um, so let's keep this one in mind. 2200 and 2300. And go back to our table. Just here. And um, we have pulled out the data for my bauxite exports in relationship to my prices. This is this one. <laughs> Okay, let's start from the top. Uh, the first one is the inflation curve, which is straight, 10%. The second one is the, um, this one here. Let me select it. Don't want to? Yeah, okay. Now you want? No, not really. Okay. Um, oh, I'm in the, in the wrong thing. Okay. This one? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, this is bauxite. And uh, the lowest curve is the raw bauxite price. Uh, we have again some uh, areas. The areas are uh, is the raw bauxite export is yellow, and uh, the second one is the bauxite export. So we see here how much in quantity. And I started to export both, but mostly raw bauxite. Uh, I started with normal bauxite, but uh, then came to the conclusion foreign workforce is not worth it, so I exported also my raw bauxite. And after I got my own people, I only exported the bauxite in bigger quantities, have both ships on export duty for bauxite. And these are how the prices develop. So, um, you see again a kind of connection between raw bauxite and bauxite by the prices. Uh, don't get uh, this, this graph doesn't start at zero, it starts at uh, 25 something. So uh, I lose from here, it's 30, to here, 
like 27 um it's uh, my box site lo lost 10 percent here from this peak to this one it lost 10 percent of value or 10 percent of my economy suffered because i exported the heck out of raw box site and we said i had 2200 tons per month of limit and you see i crashed it so i have a threshold of 100 percent so uh, my prices went down uh what did i, did I say five percent No, it was 10%, yeah. Because the prices also accumulate. So if you have something, a bad export situation, <laughs> it will get worse and worse. Yeah, it sh should not spiral out of control, but uh, yeah, you get punished. Um, the raw bauxite price, uh, so I had a mainly raw bauxite export and you see how the curves uh, separate. So in the first year, the curve of raw of uh, bauxite was nearly at the inflation point. So it follows nicely the inflation. And at the moment I started to export, it went flatline. So flatline again means to, I lose against inflation. I lose against my steel price. I can buy less and less steel the more I export and the longer I export it. So it's um, quite a pain. What happens is if I start export, uh, stopped exporting raw bauxite, uh, my raw bauxite price recovers in a way. And um, I exported uh, the normal bauxite, which is here on tops like um, 3,300. Yeah, again, I crushed, uh, I went against the limit, but uh, my limit was not so hard crushed like uh, with raw bauxite because the allowance of export was lower. <laughs> I think with a combination of bauxite and raw bauxite, uh, it was really bad for my prices. If I only had uh, exported raw bauxite, my raw prices would go down even harder. But uh, yeah, to change to bauxite, it's a good idea and um, I can live with the prices. It sounds alarming, it is not so much. So, you know, at the first year, for example, the bauxite industry pays back for itself after that i make pure money but i make not so much money uh, but i still make money out of the industry it's not that i make no money uh, the profits only go down and because uh, the industry has paid back for itself i can live with the prox uh, profits going down or make something against it for example switching from raw bauxite to bauxite which increased the profits uh, immensely so with uh, Bauxite I exported, uh, I made around 160k of uh, 160,000 rubles per month. Uh, with raw bauxite, I made uh, 80,000 rubles per month, which is a really good thing because the whole industry only needs 50 workers. And uh, the industry, the refinery wasn't so, the processing plants are not so expensive. Yeah. So that's all. <laughs> I hope you have a little bit better understanding of the prices and what the game does and what the game doesn't. Um, and, you know, um, I don't think it's, it's worth to calculate the prices to the last point and comma and everything. It's uh, nonsense. But to uh, keep to these rules, it's, it's uh, I think, logical and to take a look in the table and see, aha, my thresholds are so and so high. 50% of this one means this. Uh, I need, I can go ahead and export a shit ton of it, or I need to be cautious because if I export too much, my prices will go too mu down too much, and uh, it's not good. Yeah. So if you are, <laughs> leave a comment if you want to see a second episode where I go deeper into the stats because I also have uh, more stats. I have my first season which I can analyze. Maybe you have some interesting uh, games where you can send me the stat file. It's the stats.ini, e n e y, <laughs> um, and we talk, can talk about it. Um, I came to like the topic. I dig my teeth into it, and um, I'm not finished with it. <laughs> Okay, so if you're still here, <laughs> we go back to the refinery business and uh, see you next season. Have a great one. And back to me, Dennis. Every worker makes me a half a ton of fuel <laughs> worth per day. At the moment, we have 20, 30. Yeah. Um, 
half a ton worth. So. This uh, half a ton of fuel is worth... Um, let's look it up. Oh my god, this is horrible. <laughs> um, boom, boom, boom. Fuel, here you are. One ton is worth uh, 129. So every worker, every foreign worker, makes me 60 rubles a day with this machine here. <laughs> So the more foreign workers I can pull in, the more I will make, but the uh, bus lines are saturating or pushing everything out of the border they can, so uh, I'm fine here. And I hope I have like 30 people, nice to have like 50 people, but I don't think it will happen. Let's see how the situation at the border is. It's okay, but uh, also not great. So I have people, uh, buses for 50, 40 people. I uh, only have 10 there and here. A little bit more, but also not so much that I can say, okay, my buses run uh, completely overfilled. Yeah. So I'm pulling what I can. I think I will make decent money. I will make way more money than with my oil. But, uh, and I have higher threshold. Uh, but um, at the same time it's also a problem uh, that I cannot pull in more workers on the other hand um, you get out of commission on the other hand building here a city is uh, also a big castle because I need to hold um, everything what the people need so you're going out of commission here. Yep. Mm. People need uh, not only the basic things, they need everything to be happy and productive, uh, plus a police station. Yeah. Would be here like 10, 15 buildings at the minimum. So I get a little bit uh, easier route and use foreign workforce, which is not optimal, but it's okay. It's good enough. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Okay. So do they do their job? Okay. Just waiting on people. Let's double assign the people. Good. Good. So. Where does our little endeavor take us? Hmm. Need a long pipe here. Don't know if I'm ready for this. Especially in this season. <laughs> yeah, rather not. Okay. Um, but we can build a service road anyway, so... A little bit chilly here. No? I see Adventure Ride comic. make something here so they can start to work if this part is finished okay good good so at the moment I'm uh, faster pulling in the oil I think than I use it mm, one thing is the road to Canada is long and because Every uh, every truck nets me the same um, uh, three times the amount of uh, income. I only need to export uh, way less to have the same 30k. I think I will land at um, 100k a month for my business here. Should be doable. A little bit less because I cannot saturate 
I cannot reach my 10% goal. Yeah. Okay. But it's working and it's working fine. So, to the money situation we come. Mm. Oops. So, we can take care of our loan. <laughs> yeah. That's not buggered enough. Only 500k remains and we have 800k. Which is great. Our <laughs> box side carry it is big time. Bye bye. Okay. What remains is the dollar loan, which we take care of with the refinery. The dollar situation is not great. We owe 200k. Okay. So um, let's make it like this and see where we come out. Like so. And uh, repay this loan. And we pay that loan, maybe? Maybe not. Okay. So we are owed 218. Okay. And we have still. What? Well, roughly miscalculated. Okay. But we can repay. Mm. Let's take another loan. Hundred thirty. Uh. What now? Page 165. Oh my god. Okay. 22,000. Okay. That's what I want to see. <laughs> okay. Everything is cool, Dennis. Um, we need to repay 714 a day, which comes to 7,010 days times 3 is. 20,000 a month. Yeah, and if I read this one, it says 20,000 a month. Okay. Very nice. Getting into the number collapse. Um, 20,000 a month. I, sh I think we should uh, earn this one easy. The thing is, uh, do we have enough trucks? <laughs> so... You are out of commission. Let's abuse this truck line. And make them do something else. Also go here. Okay. Good, good. Because even though we have uh, a couple of trucks, we are filling up faster than we pulling it out, I think. And now this pump is online, but not very well connected. Okay. Let's make it this one on high priority and this one on high priority. I just um, wait until the first month is done, so end of May, you can see how well our business is going. Okay. So on the ruble side, we are clear and making money, like not tomorrow. <laughs> if you earn like, make a profit of 100k a month, uh, you earning money faster than you can spend it. It's basically the thing. 
in the year 1963. If you're in the year 1973, it's another thing because of the <laughs> of the inflation. Okay, everything is nice. This is good. So I have raised the bar so high that I have some students, not nil, and um, let's make it here 15. So I educate some to have my uh, student population or my academic population stable, but uh, not so many that I pay a lot of money for my electronics because the educated people like to buy more electronics than the uneducated. So you have to always the drive to keep this one down. I have it at an acceptable level. <laughs> yeah. Which I'm totally fine with. Um, I like that game. Um, you need to co take such things into consideration. Okay. Give me some oil trucks. Or give me none. The problem with the uh, oil refinery is always uh, one can overrun. You know this. Okay. And what we can also do is we can make a little oil distribution office thingy. Mm, link it here and go. Yeah. No, this is a depot. This is also oh, God of Forklifts. Distribution. Yep. Okay. Best idea is have distribution near the source. It will arrive the fastest the fastest the fastest <laughs> when it's needed. Give me some. The bar, I think. Water capacity. Mod, mod, mod. Mm. Still nobody here. Have I misclicked? You are out? No way. No. Oh. I've done something interesting. At the distribution office you load? Can load. No comment. Ah, I've selected here. Okay. Hmm. I see. So you leave me, please, in twenty percent of the good stuff. And you do what? Are oh, you also already have selected ten percent? So he gets a good load. You do you and you. Hopefully, I will hit all the fuel stations on the way. This one I missed. And you. And you. Oh. Really have a problem. You, 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 and you. Okay. I have forgotten you. What a shame. Hopefully they will...
Okay. Okay, help is on the way. Yeah, big time. Good. So I can use this one as a point of distribution. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, so I will load you up, not 30%, because you have a bigger internal storage. Um, it's the gas station, the gas station here. I will load you up like 80%. How much do you have internal storage? 70 tons. So 10% are 7 tons. Yeah, 80% are 13, 14 tons are still free in the truck. So they will drive always the truck from my oil refinery. And now I can tell the distro office here that I will not buy any fuel anymore from here, but pull the local fuel out from Where are you? Fire station Gas station free. Gas station free should be no service. The mines got service from somewhere else. Because it makes no sense to give them local service if the. Uh, you can come. So, you pull from here. Load, please, if we have 30% left, so he, not, he does not pull them out completely. Oh. Was it you or was it you? No, this will make no sense at all. Okay. So 13% should be left in. So it's uh, more than a truckload. So he will not drain it dry. Let's see. Okay. You are the right one. Good. Good, good, good. Nice. So... Hopefully now everybody is connected and they will be happy. What? Wow. For some time. Okay. Good. Mm. So we will not import any fuel anymore. Let's see. Last month. Import to the Soviet block. Fuel is a big part of our imports I think maybe not anymore but uh, meat food power hmm? no fuel imported this month okay let's see uh, last year imports fuel uh, last year it was 100k okay this one we also save 100k with our refinery. Not the biggest amount, but one one thing el eliminated. Um, yeah. Good. Yeah, first pump is pumping. 33. Second pump is not pumping. <laughs> Hopefully it gets some attention of our construction offices, people, maybe not so much. Okay. Good. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we have uh, reached a point where we don't export anymore, but I also raised the bar a little bit. Let's see if they all go there, except for the bulldozer. Should stay there. Would be funny. Yep, he stays there. Good bulldozer. Okay, great. So we have changed our oil distribution business and uh, it's okay, nice. We make some 
hopefully here yeah, we make positive amount of dollars. 30,000. Um, what do we have? We are already in June. Oh my god. Okay, good. So... Mm, give me this. Give me this and do the dollar thingy. Okay. We owe 100k, we have 28k, yeah, so it's a question, it will be a short business. So how much money did we make so far uh, this year, exports, fuel and bitumen, 53k, yeah, so we are already at the level, I think, like about 30k a month. And it will only go up from this point. So we can safely say mission accomplished. <laughs> and I just need to wait a month or two and I'm done with the whole situation. Yeah. So I have also big plans for the next season. Will be something different. It will not be a fast start in the 1960s, don't worry. <laughs> but we will come to it when it comes to it. Uh, keep your eyes peeled and... Uh, I thank you all for watching and following me on this season and uh, hope you have a good amount of fun and I say bye bye comrade and see you.